All right, we're back with the Film Film Script Discussion, Season 3, Episode 7, Part 8. Yeah, that didn't even have to rely on fingers this time. Yeah. Anyway, so we are still in Act 2, but we are almost through it. Um, we had the meeting where they were discussing plans about going forward. Feanor is mocking Fingolfin by saying that he's involving him in this decision, even though there really isn't much Fingolfin can do about the situation outside of armed conflict to, to re-steal the ships. <clears throat> um, Finarfin it keeps trying to make eye contact with Fingolfin across the room like, dude, this guy? Really? <laughs> Meanwhile, <clears throat> Kurafin has noticed there's something interesting about this plan. It's almost like the Feanorians could just leave anytime they wanted. Hmm. Doesn't say anything about it. But him and Feanor share a suspicious glance. They anyway. both, yeah. They're on the same wavelength. Right, exactly. As they should be. All right. <clears throat> so we need, um, I think, for a midpoint, this might be a good time to have a conversation between Galadriel and Finrod. Mm. Or do we think I it's too to, early? I wanted to save that till after the Doom. Mm. Well, the thing is that after the doom, he's, he's to, he has to make his decision after the doom. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that that decision has to be made do, with Finarfin present. Do, do, so they have to have their private talk now to, well, well sometime in Act 3, maybe not now. But. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we could do it in Act 3. I'm fine with that. But then we need to find something else to, to do here. And I don't think that we should be going back to. Eglores until after until we're at least in Act Three. Um, I don't want to go back to the the race across the water. Do we show Bulldog? Uh, it, there's nothing. There's nothing. I know, but there's nothing there. Like there's no story there, and we haven't built anything there. So like that's that's like breakdown content at best. <clears throat> and I can that that scene plays itself out relatively easily. Throwing with a, comes down and finds they built this little encampment thing. Mm -hmm. um, she might be delivering news that she's got a bead on where the elves, where where the green elves are. Um, she might be a little upset with Bulldog for just kind of hanging out <laughs> and not doing his job. We wanted to establish that when you don't get results and you're a bad guy, you get reamed out for it. Yeah. Because no one is understanding of your difficulties. Yeah. And so, I think it would be great to see Bulldog getting reamed out by throwing Wethel publicly and she's gotta be smaller than him. <laughs> hmm. And less physically imposing. Yes, because he's like this giant orc. Right. And he can't kill her because <laughs> that sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> so she's yes. humiliated in front of his troop? Yes. Yeah. If it, she it, wants to get more results, doesn't, doesn't, that under, does, doesn't that undermine his authority in a way that, that prevents him from being effective in the coming battle? Well, for, first thing, if, if any of the orcs attempted to question his orders, like he would annihilate them. And they know that because he's done it. Well, he, wait, he, he, he's he yeah. He's he's killed. He, he um. Oh wait, no. It wasn't technically an orc that he killed. Was what it? did he kill? Oh, the elves. Yeah, he he beheaded yeah. the elves. The fallen yeah. elf things. Yes. Yeah. Um. um but he, but, but yeah, he's, he has the Grishnak level of management, which is lop off a few heads. Or Ugl was it Ugluk who lops off all the heads? Yeah, I think. Either uh, way, I mean, yeah, is, is orcs versus a minor demon any more dangerous than that. I'm only catching part of what you said. What was that? They'd be in a fight unless they gang up on him because they're orcs. Right. And and orcs are a little bit too cowardly to like all like because they would all have to go at him at the same time, but that means somebody has to make a move first and nobody's about to do that. Cooperating with each other. Right. Right. They only cooperate with each other out of fear of Bulldog, essentially, and yeah. whatever middle management comes down from him. Um, 
Yeah, so we could say that this doesn't exactly undermine his leadership. It just surprises his followers that this little creature can talk to him like that. Mm -hmm. But everyone knows she gets away with it because she's Sauron's right hand. Yeah. But it does humiliate him and he's furious. Oh, yeah. He, he can be furious about oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Maybe, as a matter of fact, he, he could, he as soon as she leaves, because we have to get her out of there. She can't stay there. Um, we no. need to get it back to, to Sauron. So it, as soon as she leaves, he could just, like, the nearest fork to him, just grab them and snap their neck. Oh, wow. But she Which, wants to rile him up. Right. He wants elves already. Right. Right, exactly. there's, there's, there's still, there's nowhere near n enough dead elves yet, right? So she gives him the information, reams him out for not, for sitting on his hands and not doing anything, and then because, what does she know? Does she know about the green elves? I think that she points him in the direction of because, the green elves. Yeah. She can easily be like, you are hundreds of miles away from where they are. You have so far to go. What have you been doing sitting here for so long? Right. There's clearly no else here. Get moving. Right. Yeah, like that kind of message would be fine. Right. And as soon as he leaves, to, to establish that, like, the orcs are still terrified of him, mm -hmm. have him, like, reach out, grab the nearest guy, and just snap him. Yeah. And the orcs are like, mm, okay, yep, no, you're you're totally in charge. That's cool. Sure, because one of them was like snickering at him being uh, for, for I would actually me. prefer if there it's if it's completely unwarranted like there's no reason for it at all okay that works too <laughs> but but like, yes the point is he uh, he reasserts his authority very quickly and the orcs are on board with listening to him because they like their necks right yeah. Un unsnapped yes yes mm -hmm. Um, okay, but that that I feel like is it is like a a, a late act four thing to establish because yeah. that's because we're establishing yeah. what's going to happen in the next episode essentially. I know. That's why I was so, trying to figure out if he wanted to give it a little bit more time because he does have to travel so far to get there because he's nowhere near the green elves right now. It's it's some point in act three or four that there's a turn to the frame of some kind. At, mm -hmm. Well, that's there's going to be a, t a teaser after Act Four, and that's going to be our frame story. There was going to be something in the frame about them, about the, the Halbar or the Sons of Elrond referring to the story from the episode as like a time when it would have been better to retreat from from battle. But I think that's to be after the Doom is on screen, right? Yeah. Like we can't have them say that until we see yeah. the Doom, right? Well, right. they could say, they could say the Doom of Mandos, and the the audience yeah. who is not a Cimmerillion reader won't know what that is. I was, just, I was just saying, at some point after the Doom, we're going to have to return to the frame twice. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, no. The, the, the tag no, not necessarily. Yeah, the, we don't need to go there twice. We, um, whether, I, I'm fine with spending, because that's like a four-minute segment, so I'm fine with the with Eladon and El here bringing that up to Estelle, and he says what he's going to say, and then immediately after that like that's just a really quick exchange and immediately after that we get the the brief scene between estelle and hamilcar mm -hmm. where <coughs> where they establish what they're going to do i'm okay with that and then going off into the night but what, let's um let's finish up act two here i still we still need a scene in act two and it, it really has to be a Noldor scene. So it's just a question of what what we have here. If we're doing Thingon and Maedhros after the Doom, because that makes sense. If that if if that's if that's a scene that's that's tied to a shot at the beginning of the, the next uh, of the next episode, then yeah. that has to happen after the Doom. Mm -hmm. um, so we need. To, oh, hang on, sir. Let me let me look at this. Um, actually, you know what? Act two might be okay the way it is because the vampire scene, that's a like it's only a it's only like two sentences in my in my little notes here, but that's a that's a, like a little action piece. Yeah, that that's that would take, take some time to actually happen. <clears throat> right. You're right. Can, okay. All right, let's do act three then. Say again. That Act Three is when Namo shows up and and speaks. Um, yes, that I feel like is the is like 
right at the end of Act Three. That's it. that's our um, that's like the oh, end of Act. That's the that's the pinch of Act Three. So what is what is what are the Noldor doing? I, mean, I don't feel like the Noldor have any more scenes to do before the Doom. Well, yes, we we need to establish. <coughs> We need to, to reestablish. Have Galadriel uh, and Finrod have their private conversation yet? No, they haven't. That's what I'm saying. Like that, we need to do that. that. So you want you want that and then the doom and then something involving Valerian. I'm thinking that we need to have Finarfin and Fingolfin in a room together alone. Not necessarily oh, in a room, but done that yet. we need to have them alone before but the I, doom. I, see, I think that oh before the doom? Yeah. Yes. We do. Yeah, because we need to we need to establish their their interaction with each other. They haven't had a conversation alone this entire episode. Oh, okay. You know, like we need to see where their heads at for the doom, so that we understand where their heads have gone to afterwards. So Finarfin opens um, by saying, "You you see he's you see that he's mad." Essentially, yeah. Yeah. And he's um, like, what, what do you ex and Figolfi's like, what do you expect me to do? Go back on my word to the Valar? Right. Yeah. I spoke on my throne. Yeah. I am not uh, going to this, now I think that this is that she, scene I think should happen right before the Doom of Mandos. Like immediately that's the last scene before that. I think. The Fingolf and Fenarfin. So you want to do mm -hmm. first and and then Fingolfin. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Because because like I want to see more and more people slipping through Finarfin's fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you think he's totally going to lose the argument. Yeah. Yeah. Because Which he does, so, but... So, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't mean he's wrong. I'm just saying, you know, he's got it. Yeah. In, act, in Act 1, we made it look like Finrod was going to go with Finarfin, and now right. we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna open Act 3 with him and, and his sister, and they're like, yeah, we're both going to continue. Well, he's not going to say, no, Finrod won't say until after the Doom, I don't think. Right. Because okay, Finrod's listening to Galadriel and she's trying to convince him. So we basically have a scene where Finarfin tries to convince him. Now Galadriel tries to convince Finrod. And at the end, Finrod decides. So it's like a three step thing. Right. Okay. I missed, I missed a lot of what you said because you went out. But yeah, um, oh, sorry. basically what we're doing is we're, we're laying the groundwork for the decision of Finrod by having a scene where Finarfin tries to convince him. And then Galadriel tries to convince him the other way, all right. And then we have the, a final a, a final moment after the Doom where Finrod's going to decide. So Finrod Finn already tried to convince Finrod earlier. So now we have Finrod and Galadriel. And right. Finrod right. Or, uh, right. Act three. So. Yeah, that's the the opener of of Act three, I believe. Okay. So. So what are the arguments? I mean, I mean, Galadriel is like. Well, she can she can say something to the effect of I, I've uh, at some point in the conversation I feel like she might say to him I've never known you to be a coward. Because she that's I, I, that's got to be what she thinks I, that turning back now would be. And 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 I, I think she, I think to the effect of. If, we turn back, we're just letting Fanor win. Because that's how she sees it, and that's, I think, how Fingol... Um, yeah. Right. At like, some point, Finrod kind of has to throw at her, since when do you agree with Fanor? Like, right. Yeah. So, and she's, he, he, you know... If we, if we give in turn around now, then he's going to win. Right. So that's her argument of, of course I don't agree with Fanor, but you're just going to let him have I mean, the final say? I mean... Yeah. I mean, maybe not. Maybe not the otherwise Fanor will win because that that is a point of view that like Fanor hasn't turned against them yet. But I mean, he has turned against their family. But well, it's like that that was originally. She's so she's always disliked him. We did the bit with her hair. But no, I think Fanor wins is just for the Halkarax decision. So maybe she doesn't say that, but she says, "No, I don't. I I don't. I don't agree with Fanor. We have to stop him." And Finrod is like, um, what? <laughs> Basically, well, because... I guess Finrod is like, how do you propose to do that? Like, how does going along with him stop him? I think that just, you know, needs his fire. You know, just uh... she doesn't necessarily need to have a clear right. 
we have to show that her argument is more passion and heart and less battle plan. <laughs> right. Yes. Well, and also remember that Finarfin essentially won the discussion with Finrod earlier in the episode. So Galadriel mm -hmm. has to yeah. has to win this conversation. She's got to get the last word on him in this one. But we don't want it to <clears throat> come across that her, that her to go are like entirely good reasons it's like he's in spite of his i mean as she points out to him he also wants to go visit new places and as far away lands that he's never been to and rule and he hasn't necessarily said it out loud or even to her. this is what he's thinking which i mean i feel like I mean, I, I'm okay with alluding to the mm -hmm. fact that she can see but, into him. Like, I, I'm okay with that without, like, slamming it in the audience's face. I'm okay with kind of gently asser asserting that she can, she, that she can intuit what, like, what drives him. Because they're family. She grew up with him. She knows him well. It doesn't have to be a telepathy thing. It doesn't have to be telepathy, and it can. It, mean, but it can, but it could be right. She, know, she she knows that he has similar interests in terms of seeing faraway places and going to see new things. I mean, like wandering around is actually one of his hobbies. Right. Like exploring is one of his hobbies. She's mm -hmm. and she knows that he's. Been, uh, she could say something people. like, "You've already explored Valinor. Don't you want to see new places?" Would you be content staying here for the rest of your life? You know, she can she can hit on those oh, points. Oh yeah, that's that's the line. That's the line right there. Would you be content to stay here in Valinor for 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 our all eternity, mm -hmm. forever? And and but but I I, I wanted to want a kingdom of his own, and that like yeah, he knows yeah, but not, his like can't he can't disagree with her that he wants that because he does. Yeah, it's just his reasons for wanting a kingdom of his own and her reasons for wanting a kingdom of her own are a little different. Yeah. He's not nearly as into ordering people around as she is. <laughs> like, she's she's not Sauron, obviously, but Sauron's idea of, like, ordering the entire world so it follows his will, she gets that about Sauron. Yeah. She doesn't share that, but she understands why Sauron thinks that's cool. Finrod yeah. is not that at all on any I'm level. Finrod just wants to be friends with everybody and he wants to see all the places and he wants to understand all the people. Finrod is a philosopher and a traveler and a, he's just a lot of things that aren't I mean, he, dictator. But he, he does like the idea of being a king of somewhere, but not in a... Sure, he wants to build stuff. things. He wants to create a place that's new, but that's different than wanting to rule over people like he, he wants to be someone important he, he wants to be important and have a place and have you know a land that is his own but it's like subjects to do my bidding you know right like, he, he lacks, he seriously lacks ambition compared to the well, yeah well okay so how about this for like the parting shot then would you be content to live in Valinor for all eternity and build no place of your own? Yes. Yes. And he and and, and he he can't deny that that is a trick. Right. To him. That's that's what I'm saying. Like he has no answer. Yeah. He has no right. comment for that. Right. Like, that's her the final best. blow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I feel like we can hit um, we can hit up Eglares at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Let's um, get back to that. Right. Um, the question is. It what? Uh, Egl Eglores, that we can that we can go visit Eglores again. Because uh, remember, we haven't seen we haven't seen them before for at least. The... Right before the actual attack, I don't think that we get the. But the question is, I don't know what we can do there, other than get the actual attack, um, unless we we are having Beleg failing to to teach the Philodrum how to use. Because it's been like a couple of days, right? And he's failing to teach them how to use the weapons that they've brought quickly enough. Um, has it been a couple of days? I mean, how long does it actually take for the? For the I mean, or or like or like maybe maybe maybe, maybe even a week. I mean, even if it's 
even if it's a week or two. I agree that that's a very short amount of time to train an army. Um, it, it, it is it is it is only like ten or twenty miles at most, probably ten yeah. miles. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't look at the scale. The, the, um, the, the overland distance is like the I, point is they've got like a day, and right. in yeah. that time you don't train yeah. army. Whatever it is, it's not enough time. <laughs> right. So, but they don't know the but they don't know the wolves are like that close to them. They don't know. It's true. They don't know. So he can just. Distribute the supplies, and we can see that there's not nearly enough supplies for the people because right. we established that. So you can see that there's got like some people wearing armor and a lot of people not. Mm -hmm. And him recognizing, oh, we uh, don't really have what we need here. So they they like, practice a little bit, but it's clearly not sufficient. Right, and he can, and one of his one of his red shirts could even ask him, "Can we go back and get more?" And Bella could say, we barely have enough for all of our people. Yeah, hey, we haven't oh. made it yet. <laughs> right. Like, they, they still haven't outfitted their entire, you know, all of their warriors with with this stuff. Um, I do want, I want to correct my earlier statement. It is about, it looks like it's more like 70 miles between the two havens and so, a straight So I would I don't call know how that, fast a wolf as, runs. As the wolf runs, I would, I would call that about three days. Okay. 70 miles in three days? Yeah, because you figure that, I mean, like... Troops can reach 20 my miles best, a day, right? My, that's what I was, was going to say. At my best, I could do 20 miles a day with a pack, so... <laughs> okay, now, the distance around the Cape is harder to measure because it's not straight, but I'm looking at, like, if that's 50, that's 50... Looking like 140 miles to go to go around the Cape. On the okay. Cape. Let me let me check right. this out. So I'll look up. I know there's a Planet Earth video where there's a pack of wolves that chases a herd of caribou for like ever for days and stuff. So I'll I'll see if they have a reference in that to how many miles they cover in a day, and I'll get back to it on the forums. It doesn't in the end matter because there are no days right now. There's no sun, so sailing it's a short amount of time. But at least so that we know, I'll figure out how long it takes a group of wolves to move seventy miles. Okay. Um, I'm checking, okay, so like a super fast sailing ship, the fastest sailing ship, um, clipper ships. like cargo ship, yeah, the fastest clipper ship was able to do 42 knots, 22 knots. Okay, um, not a and, and you know, right, and I'm willing to, I'm willing to grant the elves, like I'm willing to grant Kyrdan ships that kind of speed. Kierden can build clipper ships. Got it. <laughs> right. Not not clipper ships, but he can build ships as fast as clipper ships, even Fair. though they don't have nearly as much sail. So, 140. So let's say that that's about 110 nautical miles. I'm um, just roughly. Yeah. So that's wow. That's five hours. Five days. <laughs> five hours or five days. That's five hours. hours. So yeah. the wolves need to run really fast. <laughs> so, so or the ships say, need to be a little slower uh, than clipper ships. Right. So let's say that it's a that it's like two or three days, and that the ships are are able to get there right about on time. I need we need to take a break. Uh, we're over even a, a couple minutes, and uh, anyway, if you're watching this live, hang in there. We'll be right back. If you're watching this on YouTube in the future, definitely like and share the videos if you like. I want to share them. If you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe. Check out the links below so you can get information on the Silk Film Project, uh, Mythgard Institute slash Academy. Mythgard Academy is like free classes. Mythgard Institute, you have to pay for it. But it's pretty awesome. Anyway, Signum University and MythMoot 5 taking place June 21st to the 24th. We'll be back in a minute.